Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jessica Barker and today I'm talking about what we can learn about cybersecurity from Taylor Swift. In fact, not just Taylor Swift, but Beyonce, the Kardashians, football teams, sports teams. Essentially, I want to show the fact that cybersecurity is important not just to big businesses and banks and the government, but pretty much any industry we can think of. So I'm going to go through some of those examples and explain what cybersecurity has to do with the people that I've mentioned and give you some top tips if you're maybe interested in a career in cybersecurity, whether that is working for government or working for the music industry. So before we move on, I wanted to just take a minute to introduce myself. For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Dr. Jessica Barker, co-CEO and co-founder of the cybersecurity company Sygenta. I'm the chair of a group called Club CISO, and I'm also the author of the best-selling book, Confident Cybersecurity, which was published by Kogan Page in September 2020. So what I'm talking about today, what I really want to do is show that cybersecurity is important to pretty much anyone in society, any kind of business, organization, any kind of sector. It can be easy to think that cybersecurity is the, you know, the thing that matters for big business or for banks or for governments. And of course, that's true. But pretty much any sector and any organization is dealing with information in one way or another, and that information needs protecting. So say you're interested in sports or fashion or music, but you don't necessarily want to be a fashion designer or a pop star or a footballer, but maybe you're also interested in technology. Maybe you're interested in how people relate with technology. Well, actually you could combine all of those things that you're interested in and potentially have a career working in cybersecurity for sports teams or for the music industry or for the film industry or any other kind of industry. So I'm going to go through some examples of how we can learn about what cybersecurity means to all these other types of sectors. And I'm going to start, obviously, with Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, um, some people think of Taylor Swift and security because there is a very popular parody account on Twitter um, called Swift on Security. And I say a parody account, but I think part of the reason it's so popular is that actually, if we were to think of a pop star who also potentially could be uh, working in cybersecurity in their part time, <laughs> in their spare time, then maybe we would think that actually that could be Taylor Swift. Um, so the account works really well and is very popular, but there are other reasons we can connect Taylor Swift and cybersecurity. And one is um, we have heard about actually what Taylor Swift or maybe her team do to protect the most important thing to Taylor Swift, um, which surely is her music. For any music artist, for any pop star, it's really important that they keep their asset, you know, their music secure until they're ready to release it. You know, imagine they've got a new song coming out, um, I say it's going to be released in a month. Everybody's working towards that deadline of releasing the song on that day. Well, what would happen if the song gets leaked before it's due to be published? That would be really bad for the artist and for everyone working with them. So Taylor Swift and her team um, do quite a lot to make sure they keep her important assets, her music secure until it's ready to be released. And so, for example, there's been reports that Taylor Swift, when they're filming a new music video and, you know, they're on set and Taylor Swift is obviously there and she has her backing dancers and they're all doing the moves, dancing to the music in the video that we ultimately see. Well, reports suggest that actually they aren't dancing to the music at all. What they're dancing to is a click track that plays the right beat so the dancers know when to move and how to move but they're not listening to the actual song because Taylor Swift or her security team don't want to run the risk of that song being played on set and loads of people not just the dancers but everyone who's accessing the set being able to hear it and somebody potentially could take a sneaky recording and leak it. Her team don't want that to happen so they don't let that happen. They keep that music on a need to know or rather need to hear basis. 
There have been other reports about what Taylor Swift's team does to keep her music secure. For example, Taylor Swift collaborated with Ed Sheeran on a song a few years ago, and Ed Sheeran has actually spoken about the process. And he said that he recorded his part of the song, sent it through to Taylor Swift, her team, and actually, when it came to hearing the final version of the song and approving it, he wasn't sent it over the internet. Instead, apparently what happened is Taylor Swift sent a member of her team um, with an iPad, presumably a brand new iPad, never been connected to the internet. On that iPad was one thing. It was the song that she was producing with Ed Sheeran. That iPad was in a locked briefcase. The person taking the song literally flew, I think on a private jet to meet Ed Sheeran, allowed him to listen to the song once, get his approval. And then the iPad went back in the briefcase. The security guard went back to Taylor Swift, said, yeah, he approves. And then presumably they wiped the iPad or maybe they smashed it up with a hammer, but they made sure that that song did not go on the internet until it was ready to be released because the team understood that actually when you put something on the internet, unfortunately, no matter everything we might do to try and protect it, it is going to be vulnerable one way or another. So that's Taylor Swift doing quite a lot or her team to make sure that her information, that her songs are protected until she's ready for them to go public. Beyonce apparently also takes care of her cybersecurity. Reports have suggested that she actually makes it quite difficult for anybody to know her email address. According to reports, Beyonce changes the email address that the vast majority of people might access every few months. And she does this because she doesn't want the same email address kind of going around lots of different people and hanging around and opening up the ability of people to contact her, maybe send her phishing emails. Um, So she actually burns through email addresses, at least for the majority of people who might contact her. Maybe she has a trusted email address, maybe that only goes to trusted sources. So that's Beyonce. We then have um, an interesting story in terms of the Kardashians. People might remember a few years ago, unfortunately, Kim Kardashian um, was attacked, physically attacked, when she was staying in accommodation in Paris. And the attackers, the people who broke in and attacked her at gunpoint and stole her jewellery, have said that they used information that she shared on social media to identify the fact that she had very um, expensive um, goods with her. She, you know, had shared pictures of her jewellery um, and made it clear that she had the, the rings and things with her in Paris. She'd said on social media she was in Paris and she'd also apparently shared pictures where um, the attackers were able to work out pretty much where she was staying. Um, so, of course, this is not to say it was her fault. Um, that's absolutely not not the case, but it does show that information we might share um, on social media, actually there are criminals out there who might try and, and piece that together and use to their advantage one way or another, particularly if we're a high profile celebrity. So the Kardashians have said that after that experience, they've actually changed their approach to social media and they generally are not tweeting or Instagramming posts about where they are at the time. They will take a photo and they will wait until they have left the location to share it so that people can't find out where they are um, and take advantage of them one way or another in real time. And as I said at the start, Football, sports, that is also highly relevant for cybersecurity. There has been many stories about cybersecurity and sports um, to the extent to which actually in July of 2020, there was a GCHQ report saying that 70% of sports organisations in the UK had experienced a breach in the previous year. And this is more than double the average business. So the report was saying that it's actually really important that sports organisations take this threat seriously. Cyber criminals follow the money. 
And with a sports industry that is worth reportedly about £37 billion to the UK economy, unfortunately, it's no surprise that cyber criminals are targeting that sector because they, they go after the numbers, they go after the money. Most attacks apparently are involving what's called business email compromise and social engineering. So essentially most attacks in the sector focus on compromising the email accounts of people working for the sports teams and then the criminals pose as the person whose account they've compromised and they send an email that looks like it comes from them saying to a colleague saying, you know, oh, I need you to transfer some money to this account. They'll give some kind of lie, some plausible story as to why the money needs to be transferred and the criminals are using that method to try to steal money um, from these sports organisations. There have been other news stories about cyber attacks, data breaches, hacking involving sports teams. For example, in 2019, Liverpool Football Club reportedly paid Manchester City a £1 million payout um, because of allegations that there may have been some hacking of a scouting system or maybe even malicious insiders sharing information that they should shouldn't. So all of this goes to show there are many industries from the music industry to um, social media influencers to sports teams and many, many more. I could keep talking about how cybersecurity applies to TV industry, to journalists, to move the movie industry and so many more sectors in society that actually of course, cybersecurity is important too, because information is important too. And when it comes to cybersecurity, that's really what we're doing. We're protecting information. And beyond that, we're protecting people. We're protecting people's livelihood. We're protecting their ability to go to work, to run a business, to do their job, and to use the internet safely and securely. So if you are interested in maybe a career in cybersecurity, if you want a career that is fast paced, that is always kind of changing, offering new challenges and in which you get to learn a lot, um, work with technology and work with people, then I highly recommend it. What I would suggest you do is be curious. You know, if I've mentioned anything in this video or if you hear things that other people talk about in terms of cybersecurity and you think, I'd quite like to know more about that, then actually go away and have a look. You know, you can search for that information, read up a bit more about it and see what makes you curious about it. It might be the technical aspects. It might be the human aspects. It might be the physical security aspects. So be curious. I would encourage you to ask questions, you know, to use online events um, or maybe social media sharing as a way of asking people in the industry about their jobs, about what interests you. And of course, sharing what interests you, maybe with a blog, maybe with videos on YouTube, whatever it might be, but you might find a way that actually you enjoy sharing what interests you in the industry and what you're learning about. They're great ways of getting to know the field a little bit more and getting people in the industry to know you. I hope you've enjoyed what I've spoken about today in terms of what Taylor Swift, but not just Taylor Swift, can teach us about cybersecurity.